What makes a king, according to Tolkien? The idea of kingship plays a central role in the works of J.R.R. Tolkien. It is through his characters that Tolkien showcases the greatest virtues a man or woman can possess, virtues that are most exemplified through the position of king. In this video, we will explore these virtues through the unique stories of his characters during the epic tale that is The Lord of the Rings. The first virtue I want to talk about is wisdom. Wisdom is one of the most foundational virtues a person can possess, and especially one that holds a position of power. Wisdom should not be confused with knowledge. More often than not, wisdom comes in opposition to knowledge. It is the realization, understanding and ultimate acceptance of wrongdoing, of changing your ship's course, of letting yourself ask for help and accept the assistance that is given to you. Wisdom is growth, and it is one of the things that lead to the transformation of the self. It is my view that no other character exemplifies this more, and most especially the spirit of transformation, than Theoden of Rohan. Though the King of the Rohirrim is known for many of the virtues that will be covered in this video, it is his wisdom that makes him stand above lesser men. He begins his journey in the Two Towers as a man enslaved, ensnared by the darkness of Saruman, and guided by the lies of Wormtongue. He is antagonistic to what remains of the Fellowship, and is a shadow of his former self, a disgrace to the House of Errol. He had ruled for over four decades, he was old, he was sick, he was tired, he had lost his son and heir to his kingdom, he was being overrun. With the help of Gandalf he is able to see his sorry state and throw off the yoke of Pirma and Saruman. He heeds the counsel of the fellowship and feels the remorse of his foolishness in trusting Wormtongue. Though it is of profound difficulty he is prepared to sacrifice everything, including his life and royal crown, in the defense of Gondor even though Rohan had not been as lucky. He does this because he understands that this is the only hope the free people have to resist the scourge of Sauron, even if he himself does not manage to see it. It is wisdom that allows him to see the greater good, the course the ship requires, the bigger picture. It is wisdom that allows him to understand that, a king though he may be, he is ultimately nothing but a cog in the large machine that is the fight against Mordor. Moving on to perhaps the most important virtue a person may hold. Humility. Tolkien himself was heavily influenced by his Christian beliefs. Anything that applies to the average individual applies a thousand times more to those who wield power. As pride can be the root of sin, humility can be that of good. It is through humility that you can truly be wise. It is through humility that you can truly be dutiful and put something other than yourself first and it is through humility that you can make the necessary sacrifices that a king must make for his people. No other character, in my opinion, except perhaps for Samwise Gamgee, exemplifies this trait better than Aragorn, son of Arathorn. Despite his sacred lineage, which went back to the days of Númenor, for the majority of his life he has lived under the worst conditions to protect others, gaining nothing for himself. It is of others that his thoughts go whenever trouble arises. Though of kingly stock, he refuses himself any claim to crown or throne at the peak of his glory following the victory at Minas Tirith because he understands what Gondor requires of him. Gondor requires stability in these days of darkness. It requires healing and not internal strife between those that would or wouldn't support the return of Elendil's heir. He understands his place in the world. He carries Elendil's sword proudly and attests to his lineage. Yet he also understands the need for him to do his duty and serve the free people, and as such, not unlike Theoden, he acknowledges his part as cog of the machine, he is ready to give everything that he has ever loved, humble himself before the blade of the enemy, all for the slim chance that Sauron's lack of humility, his arrogance, leads him to a fatal error, taking his attention away from Mordor to what remains of the men of the West. This is because Sauron could not comprehend that someone at the peak of their glory would be sacrificing everything and anything. But Aragorn was humble enough to be able to do just that. And in case you're still not convinced, think of Boromir, son of Denethor, the proud man of Gondor who was under the delusion that he could master the will and power to overtake the One Ring and become its master. It was this folly that led to his fallout with Frodo, but it was through his humility in accepting his mistake that he was redeemed in sacrificing himself for Merry and Pippin and ultimately admitting his wrongdoings to Aragorn, whom he accepts as his king. Ultimately, it is through humility, or lack thereof, that some of the greatest and noblest of kings fell under the sway of the ring and destroyed themselves in their pride and glory. The next virtue I want to talk about is compassion. 
compassion finds its seeds in love and its branches spread into a king's sense of justice. It's an important trait, as it is through compassion that a king is able to not only better care for and love his people, but also deal fairly with those that might, on the surface, not seem deserving of his love. It was Thranduil, the king of Mirkwood, that did his best to deal fairly with the dwarfs of Thorin, despite the grave differences between their people. He does not deal out judgment easily, and his innate compassion and sense of fairness is what prevents him from dealing the dwarfs an unjust punishment, something a lesser king would have done in the precarious situation Thranduil found himself in, in the midst of Dol Guldur's rise and ever-expanding darkness into the forest. Though he treats them harshly on the surface, it is merely to protect his own people and understand the situation before it escalates. Where a lesser king may have chosen to hurt them, Thranduil chooses to capture them until more is learned and later assists them following the Battle of the Five Armies and tries to show understanding to their plight. It is how a king manages to balance what is convenient and what is right that justice is served, and it is something I believe ultimately finds its roots in compassion and love for others. We cannot talk about kings without talking about lineage, royal lineage. And although lineage plays a vital role in Tolkien's legendarium, whether that be of hobbits, languages, trees or kings, it is something that simply complements a king rather than what makes him. Aragorn stems from a mighty line indeed, yet it is not his pedigree alone that makes him king, nor does he ever try to push his claim to the people of Gondor. The king's lineage is an aspect that actively cooperates with other kingly virtues according to Tolkien, such as tradition, connection to history and the unity it can bring amongst the people, yet by itself it holds a noteworthy but ultimately lesser sway on what makes a good king. Nonetheless, lineage remains important and is often mentioned throughout the legendarium either directly, through actual references or indirectly through the different treatment a certain character may receive. Now, how can we talk of kings, especially in Tolkien's legendarium? when we haven't talked of bravery yet. Almost all of Tolkien's kings are mighty warriors in their own right. Though bravery is actively connected to other virtues mentioned, good kings in Tolkien's world lead their own men, fight in the front lines, are ready to make the ultimate sacrifice and never ask of their people something that they would not themselves do. Although a king need not necessarily prove himself in battle, he should be capable to do so in his role as protector of his people. A king often takes the role of the father of his subjects, and as such, he must have the capacity to protect them as a father would protect his own family. Without that meaning that he needs to be a violent individual, his bravery is simply a tool to be harnessed for the sake of those that he serves. I do not love the bright sword for its sharpness, or the arrow for its swiftness, nor the warrior for his glory. I love only that which they defend, said Aragorn himself in the Two Towers, and no other quote showcases this point more. A true king knows when to stand down, knows when to charge, knows when to wage war or make peace. He does nothing for himself or his own vanity, but simply what is best for his realm. That is what true bravery is, and it is directly intertwined with a man's humility. Other traits important to Tolkien include a king's connection to nature, his spirituality and respect for the natural world, the latter especially showcased in its antithesis with Saruman's destruction of the trees. To be king is difficult, and to be a good one even more so. No man is infallible, even the greatest among us, and that is something often underlined in the Lord of the Rings. As characters grow, admit their mistakes, and become better versions of themselves. As they fail but continue trying until they succeed. Despite their fallibility, the only thing one can do is strive to be better strive to capture the essence of these virtues and become even greater every time. Isildur did everything right until the end, but he was unable to hold off his temptation, and that became his undoing. All that is gold does not glitter. Not all those who wander are lost. The old that is strong does not wither. Deep roots are not reached by the frost. From the ashes a fire shall be woken, a light from the shadow shall spring. Renewed shall be blade that was broken, the crownless again shall be king. Thank you for watching.